Welcome to the Finally Marketing That Works podcast. We all know marketing is a very vast array of things and services. You will see kind of the evolution of marketing. We're going to interview guests from all walks of life. Stay tuned and enjoy the Finally Marketing That Works podcast. Today, we're joined by a very good friend of mine, Alicia Crandall, who is also the COO of Slater Strategies. She's a great marketing mind, background in business, went to Auburn University, has a marketing degree. She brings a ton of things to the table for Slater Strategies to help our clients grow and be successful. And we dive into all of it on today's episode. So stay tuned in just a few moments for the Finally Marketing Networks podcast. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Finally Marketing Networks podcast. I'm your host, Mitchell Slater, and I'm joined by a really, really good friend and somebody I have to talk to pretty much every day. And no, it's not my wife. It is the COO of Slater Strategies, Alicia Crandall, joining us from beautiful Fort Pierce, Florida, right next to the city I live in. So Alicia, how are you today? I am just fabulous. Thank you, Mitchell. How about yourself? I'm doing really, really good. I mean, we're going to have a blast. We're going to talk about about marketing and business and kind of your background and how you got to where you are today. So uh, I, what I want to do first, though, introduce yourself and just fill us in on the life of Alicia Crandall and your family and maybe where you went to school and what you like to do for hobbies and all that stuff. Absolutely. Like Mitchell said, my name is Alicia Crandall. I am a Florida born and raised. I graduated from Auburn University in business administration with a focus on marketing and accounting. Marketing is way more fun than accounting, so that's what I focus on. Um, Came back to Fort Pierce about 10 years ago now, and my husband and I and our two kids, we live the best life that we can going on adventures when possible, and we make sure every day is lived to the fullest and have fun because it's all about joy in life and everything they can make of it. And then for business, I have done lots of fun things, started in hotel and restaurant hospitality and management down that road, moved back here, uh, worked in other restaurants and managed in them. And then finally was given the opportunity and the privilege to work for my father's company, which is a storage facility. And I helped him run that, grow the business, increase revenue, all the fun stuff and businesses and gave him the opportunity to sell the company at a high number for him to be able to retire. And during all of those fun activities of work, I was given the opportunity to learn all the different ways businesses are run and how people are the key to everything that we do. And to be successful, especially in marketing, is to be able to identify each consumer and understand how and what they want and how to be able to identify and recognize what their wants are to be able to relate to them to sell the products that will suit each client. How's that? That's good. I like it. And I do, I want to dive in first. I know it was a while ago, the restaurant industry, hospitality industry, how did you, working in that industry, how have you seen that one change over the years? I know you've been out of it for a while, but kind of how have you seen that one in the, I guess the evolution of marketing when it came to how did they, Uh, do marketing then and then kind of uh, how you saw it maybe now obviously the biggest thing is the internet as we know our phones our devices mobile devices i don't remember the last time i called a hotel to make a reservation i use the internet for everything especially after being behind the scenes at hotels and everything Uh, a lot of times especially the bigger brands you'll go to a call center and might not be for that direct property you want to talk to so if you have specific questions a lot of times their website will give you their answers Uh, as we know websites are continuing like continually to develop to have more information because our need to know immediately is growing every day so i know do using technology, having iPads, um, digital screens in front of meeting rooms, things of that nature. It's really the way it's developed because it's all about technology, especially with that industry. Just like I'm sure a lot of people, you guys have gone to restaurants now, you know, they you swipe your card at the table. They don't even go to their point of sale machines to do it anymore. Things are happening as you say, you know, other big chains, you can order at the table too. And they have games at the table so you just swipe that credit card so you have something to do while you're just waiting for your food. So technology has really 
increased more traffic and ease of use in restaurants for people for sure and hotels that's the biggest thing just like everything else just technology and you have to change with it or people will be bored with you or they won't know where you are yeah adapt or <laughs> die that's what i feel like the uh well i know i remember talking with you back when you got to know you when you were working at the your dad's storage facility was just that how competitive that industry is and well what yeah, still is. I don't say it was, but no, it still is. And the I don't really know that industry very well. I know when my wife and I moved to uh, Florida, we didn't need a storage facility, and I remember seeing them popping up everywhere, not just mm -hmm. Florida, but everywhere. I was like, why, why, why do people have so much stuff? Like, why, why can't you just get rid of it? But then I quickly realized people just like having stuff. And of course, you got the storage facilities for people in, in transition and all that, but. I think some people, I remember you mentioned it, just had stuff upon stuff that they would store in their unit. It goes, the culture of storage goes to a lot of the baby boomers and their parents who were depression parents, people that grew up from there. Those, the people that grew up during the Great Depression knew to be frugal and you hung on to everything because they went through losing everything they had. As we know, and you know, if you read through history, we've been taught, you know, they literally lived on the streets, some people, and they didn't even have shoes. So I think that was passed down by generations So people hung on to their stuff and to have your things. Like this desk that was your great grandfather's and now you feel obligated to keep it because your mom had it, your grandma had it, et cetera, et cetera. But the new mentality that they keep trying to do is minimalist, which that started, that movement came about during the peak of the time I worked at the storage facility. And I wasn't really keen on the minimalist movement for that reason. But personally, I believe in that. I, it might be because I grew up seeing people store stuff in the facility that 90% of the things that people keep are, it's garbage, unfortunately. But the storage facility business in general became booming because it was a great way for the REITs, the big real estate investment groups and trusts to invest large sums of money so those investors would have a place for their money to sit and not, you know, not be taxed at higher rates and get a good return. And what happened, just like any small business, as we know, the big companies come in and you have to try to survive on your own being the little guy. So my biggest job was staying relevant within a community that we've been a part of for over 30 years and trying to stay on top of that with the number one thing websites when people are moving into the area they're not looking in the phone book because they don't even have our phone book right so they use google and that's the biggest thing that i learned was you have to just stay relevant to compete with the big companies and I'm assuming that costs a lot of money to compete as a little guy against these big guys with million dollar budgets in multiple locations. Correct. And those companies, they don't outsource that work. They have people there every day doing it, seeing what new, the new keywords are, what your SEO is. That's their only job is continually, continually look at their rating and where they are on their page for Google and be better. And they have the budget for ads. As we know, Google ads aren't the cheapest. They can work, but they're a short-term gain for results. And the long game is always to have good keywords and SEO to build your website. So you stay relevant even once your Google ads expire. But these companies, they have people that was their only job to stay on top of it. And it's not just the computer like the website parts also the rates being competitive in their prices and being able to check all the competitor websites daily or weekly to see if you're still in the right price margin that you're supposed to be in well and for the rate you paid just for marketing to give people an idea what did that range from when you when you did run ads versus when you didn't run ads i know you guys were paying a good bit of money for getting your marketing done for the storage facility we would pay two to five thousand dollars a month depending on what we were doing and that would include your management fee and your google ads depending on seasonally just like everything else you need to do your market research figure out when you need to put more money into ads and whatnot so we would put more money in come peak season and then we could drop them down as well as be aware of your occupancy or your sales just like for any business if you realize you have way too much 
going on, you slow this Google ad so you can catch up on your work and just be mindful of how much you're getting a return. But we would spend a good amount of money and like $5,000 would be very high for us to have a lot of ads running, but the minimum $2,500 a month because otherwise when people would search storage near me, we would not come up on the first page because of all the big dogs. I'm assuming you you have to continue to market because I'm assuming people don't just keep stuff in a storage unit forever. Um, I mean, maybe some, some of them I'm sure do. Those are your best customers, but I'm sure there's still turnover. The good thing is about how our business was being run though, because we were there, we were an established company that did choose to evolve and adapt with the market and marketing tools but we had a very good returning client base and how we would remember to, how we would stay in front of those people would be, um, you know, doing community events or being a part of any kind of business to business organization within the community, because it would remind people, oh yeah, American personal storage is down the street. Otherwise, you know, you'd get lost because all these new facilities would get built. So. The marketing isn't just about your website. That's just a huge, in this world, it's big piece of the pie, but the other is being out in the community and other business organizations to be reminded of where you are and who you are. And for back when you were, were there, what would you say was the best, we'll go with two, two questions here, best sure. bang for your buck and for marketing and the one that just worked the best, whether it was more expensive or not, where you're like, wow, I have to have this one because this brings in the most people for, for us as clients. Well, definitely it was split probably 60, 40 for returning customers compared to how did you find us? It would be through Google. Uh, everybody, we didn't do email campaigns. Um, we weren't built that way. And, to be honest, who wants a newsletter from a storage company? Um, <laughs> unless you're getting ready to move. It's like, oh, top five things. Like, oh, yeah, this is what I should pack and what I shouldn't pack. Like, fragile things go in the front. You know, things of that. Um, but nobody really wants to think about moving because it's horrible. Everybody hates that. Or the other things that remind people about when you move things or store things. You know, we talked about the four Ds, death, displacement, divorce, or three Ds, sorry. And um, just... It, you're not always finding people in the best place, stages of their life. So a newsletter or a blog post about storage wouldn't it be like the most uplifting thing people want to look at every day. So definitely doing our Google ads and keeping our website at standard, how Google and all the other entities want your website so they stay alive, that you're checking all the boxes that, yes, this company is still open. Uh, that was the most important thing we did was definitely our website because people communicated through it. You know, they could email us and I was able to communicate back that. And even my management software that I used within the company, because with that, I was able to track my marketing. So without management software, knowing where the customers came from, how long they stayed, what months, that is a huge thing. You have to have a good way to track all your clients and their behaviors. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to learn anymore with and to go on in the future. You have to be adaptive, but you can only learn by having information. So management software and doing a website that has the key things like SEO and Google Ads, that's what kept us going. All about that data. I'll tell whoever's listening why Alicia works uh, with me now because she's awesome at what she does. She knows marketing. She knows data. She knows spreadsheets and all that fun stuff that, that makes the company uh, grow and be successful. So uh, obviously, thank you, Alicia, for being yeah, on the yeah. team. Uh, if you were to leave anybody who's listening uh, with any marketing advice from from your head for what would you give somebody if you give them any type of advice whether they own a storage facility a restaurant hospitality anything like that what would you say is like hey this is what i think you should focus on from my point of view and maybe what you learned in school okay so with marketing it it's not about the wow factor that's always at the end marketing comes from a half all right the key thing is it has to be from the top down your company for marketing to work, you need to make sure your company is established. You need to make sure you have good people, even if it's just you, that you have your whole game plan 
done and figured out. You need to know the direction where you're going. You need to have the next year to two years planned out and knowing what you want. If it being goals or you want to reach out to this many people, grow by this percentage, you have to have a plan. At least, I would say two years out. Because with that, you build your budget for marketing. And with that, you can build your marketing plan. It's just like everything else. You have to know how much you can spend, how much time especially you can put into it. And just have a plan. You need to know the direction you want to go. You need to have some, even if it's a crazy number, like I'm going to grow 50% in the next two years. Wonderful. How are you going to get there? And with that, you're able to do your SWOT analysis and things like that. Figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are, your obstacles. And from there, learn how to make yourself stronger in a better company. And then it just all falls into place once you have a plan, a goal, and then you can figure out who your target audience is. And then at the very end, once you figure that out, you can get the best wow factor. Bam, in your face, look at me, marketing idea. But you have to do all the boring stuff first, unfortunately. Just like baking a cake, it's boring. I don't like baking. You got to measure everything and make sure everything's right. Mix it all together and you got to wait for it to bake. Make sure it's cooked all the way through. Pull it out. Then you get to ice it and make it look pretty. And then the reward is that big delicious bite of that cake. And that's what a whole marketing plan is. It's not just the cake at the end. It's all the pieces and steps that were to make that cake. Man, that was very well put and on the spot too. Way to go. Thanks. All right. That was on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> the best way I like to do it. Uh, well, you guys hear, hear, heard it here first from Alicia Crandall uh, here at COO Slater Strategy. So, Alicia, thanks for hopping on the podcast. Finally, glad to have My you pleasure. on for yeah. uh, the first one. And uh, thank you. I keep the coup and cool. Don't forget. So. <laughs> and let's continue to kick butt <laughs> here in 2022. All right, Alicia. All right, onward and upward, and keep going, people. Don't give up on yourselves. Marketing's not that hard if you have good direction. Amen to that. Yep. Thanks, Alicia. You're welcome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. Huge shout out to Alicia. Thanks for hopping on the podcast. Obviously, we've been making this podcast for a while, and now you finally got to be a guest on it. So I hope you had fun, and I hope you guys learned at least one thing, as always, from the podcast today that you can take back to your business to grow and be more successful. We'll be back here next time with another new episode on the Finally Marketing That Works podcast. We'll see you then.